Right. Okay, this is a, <laughs> I just did a test to see if I could actually go live and um, uh, I suddenly lost connection. So let's see what happens now. I'm just really logging on here to say thank you for those who watched a few minutes ago. I see three people are on now. Um, and I will be back tomorrow. And um, but I've got a few minutes if anybody I'm uh, yeah, I'm back, but I don't know how long for. Um, so I, I'm sort of here to say thanks for um, turning up and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm not going to go quite yet. Though. So I, I think there were a few questions on the last test I did a few minutes ago. Somebody said, can I paint more people in my pictures? Um, I don't have the name on the list anymore because it's a different session. Um, I, I used to paint people all the time. I've painted hundreds and I've drawn hundreds again of uh, portraits, but I'm not really, uh, I don't really want to do that anymore. I'm sort of choosing the sort of nice free and loose sort of style. So uh, I won't be doing that anytime soon. Now, I don't know why the connection was lost before, because there isn't a storm here at the moment. Um, it may be my computer. I'm going to check a few things when this uh, session has finished. So uh, let's, um, if there's any more questions, fire away, and I'll do my best to answer them. Carly Brand, okay, you, you gotta go and work in your garden. Okay, hope it goes well. Have a good garden. Hello, Australia. Annabelle Davy, Mark Bradford, what camera do I use for photographing your finished paintings? Uh, it's a very old uh, Nikon D, D100, D5, D something, uh, D100, I think. Uh, it's quite good. It's not not the latest by any means, but it's got a good lens and that's the bit that really matters. And um, it produces big enough digital images to um, almost fill the spread of an average magazine in quite quite high quality. So yes, yeah, good one. Uh, probably time I bought another one. Uh, but it's always, there's always time to buy another camera. I, like, I must admit, I do like gadgets. Ah, right. Okay. Um, any tips on photographing paintings? Yes. Okay. Now, I used to use just a standard light bulb uh, in my room, and uh, it's one of the old-fashioned type that actually has a filament. Um, while I'm um, videoing, I use a, a sort of bank of LED lights in a panel, which can go up to the ceiling. And the light that you're seeing me on now is light that's just bounced off the ceiling back now. Uh, if you do have lights and you want to photograph a painting, they say 45 degrees off each side of the painting. Um, and I've tried that, but I always get hot spots, which means um, you, know, you get a, a bit of flare in, um, in your picture, you know, a light, a light area. So it does take a bit of juggling. One thing I do have to do here because of the room, there's only one window in this room, which is over there, is I have to close the shutters so the light doesn't come in and bounce off the floor. That's how tricky it can be. So uh, I prefer the light to bounce off the ceiling down onto the painting. Uh, and then any reflections tend to go down back to the floor. So it's a, uh, or you, you could get lights, uh, a lighting thing called a soft box, which has several bulbs in it and it's got like an opaque piece of glass or plastic usually nowadays over the front just to just to soften the light and um, yeah it's a question of juggling so it's fiddly though um, what plans do I have for future videos that's a good question Tito um, 
Well, they're always going to be landscape. They're either going to be landscapes, cloudscapes, or seascapes. Um, or, of course, I I like clouds. I like clouds because it's like playing. I think it's a bit like playing, really. Uh, it's just fun, and um, but you just you just need to um, you know if you want to paint clouds, uh, first thing is go and look at them. That's that's the first bit of uh, I hope help that I can give you. Look at clouds. Um, I, I personally don't think there's any point in looking at little white fluffy things on a blue background. I think you need to go out when there's a bit of drama and, um, uh, you know, and lighting, lighting is important. Look at clouds first thing in the morning or in late evening. Uh, it's called the photographer, well, it's called the artist's light. And then they, when photography was invented, the photographers started calling it the photographer's light. Um, but uh, that's when you start to get a red colour in the sky and it just makes it more interesting. It's just all about observation, really. And of course, you can make up a sky as you go along because uh, who's to say that sky didn't exist at some time somewhere? Um, so uh, where are we now? Let me just check. Yeah, future videos. They're going to be anything except people and animals. I just want to keep it simple because I think a lot of people who want to paint when they try and paint a person in a picture or an animal in a picture, that if, unless you've got quite good drawing skills, it can put you off. So this is to get everyone nice and comfortable and confident they can produce a painting. Um, future videos. Um, greetings from Barcelona. Hello, Barcelona. Any tips on photographing pet? Oh, I've done that. Um, basics of perspective. Yeah, I've done a few videos on that. Uh, perspective is ridiculously easy to get. And um, I, I'll put more emphasis on my next video on that. It's just a question of blending the sky into the land. You don't want a hard line between the two. They have to sort of merge together. And that will, that will automatically give you perspective. Uh, you could, in fact, I'll tell you what I'll do on my next video. I'll show you how you can get perspective in four brush strokes, and uh, I hope that'll help. Why did I relocate to France? Uh, well, Hong Kong was too hot. I was there for a couple of years. Um, I decided uh, I'd worked in London for so many years, uh, commuting into London from the south of England, and uh, eventually I got a job. Um, uh, as art director on Geographical Magazine, and that, they gave me the uh, chance to travel. I'd never really travelled much. And I got the bug, really. So I thought I'd had enough one day, and I decided I would just uh, try Hong Kong. And um, I stuck it out for a couple of years, but then I thought, well, let's go back to Europe. And um, and I thought, well, let's try something a bit different. So that's why I'm in France. And, uh, yeah. Um, Hello, Melissa M. Good morning from New York. Good afternoon from France. Uh, Lily Fee, hello from Germany. Hello, Germany. My goodness, Tito, you're in Kazakhstan. Amazing. Isn't the internet wonderful? Um, inverted popes. Jackson's order put in, ready to start again after 30 years away. Thank you for inspiration. Good, 30 years. That's a bit of a long time, isn't it? So that's quite a break. So... Um, next, good morning from Portugal. Um, I won't try to pronounce your name, but um, no, I don't know how you pronounce that. Sorry. Um, do I think no, I don't do plain air, uh, Christopher uh, Blaylock. I don't do plain air paintings. Um, I've done a few in my time in England, but the uh, you know, the, the sunlight wasn't quite so um, devastatingly powerful as France. If I if I I'll tell you why, if I walk to my post box, which is about sixty meters away, and if I open a letter and I get the white glare hitting my eyes, by the time I get in the house, I can't see anything. Uh, I've always had this problem, and um, so to go out and try and look at a painting in bright sunlight in France, that would that would be the end of my eyesight. So I don't I don't do that. Uh, I prefer, I, I've got all my pictures in here that I'm going to paint. Um, 
Uh, clouds in Tasmania are amazing and finding your videos timely. Cass Wilmot. Ah, Tasmania. I always wanted to go to Australia. Never got there. But uh, I'm glad that um, you're finding my videos useful. Good. Oh, so the transmission is fragmented. I see that lettering is in Hebrew, so I can't read it. Um, so I don't know your name, really. Um, interesting. I, I, I think I might speed up a bit so that uh, in case I get cut off again, um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, hello from Forest Lodge. N-R-E-S-S. N-R-S. Um, I don't know where Forest Lodge is, except I used to know one in Sussex in England years ago. Um, okay. How often a week do you recommend practicing painting? Uh, well, uh, every day. Uh, I don't, but uh, if I could, I would paint every day. But uh, I design paperback books for an English publisher, so I have to, um, I have to keep that going. And I think on th this year I'm up to 60 books, I think. So as you can, uh, that's why I don't paint every day, but if you can do it. It's just like playing the piano. Hello, the Netherlands, Leonard 2077, Zenny. It's amazing the names people put on their, uh, the, you know, their YouTube handles and stuff. Um, Linear perspective, yeah, I can, I can, I, I think probably I would have to actually uh, video a, a drawing and show you how to do that. It's actually not that difficult, it's quite simple. Once you know the little tricks, anyway. Um, London, Ontario, Catherine McLean, or McLean, McLean, McLean. Uh, my bucket list includes a trip to France to take your class. Oh, well, you can always do it on Zoom. Uh, take it out of the bucket and put it on your computer right now. Um, oh, as the numbers of viewers go up, so the questions move faster. Uh, sometimes feel low. Oh, let's jump again. Catherine McLean. Sometimes, no, it isn't. It's NRS. Sometimes feel low mo motivation to get going. Do you recommend wait for inspiration or just dig in and get, yeah, don't wait for inspiration. Treat it. Um, uh, how do I put it? Okay, so since the age uh, when I left college, I was, what, how old was I? I was about 18, 19, I think. Um, I've been a pro professional designer. And if you're a professional designer, which is, a, is an artist, designers are artists, um, it was drummed. I suppose I, I'm a victim of brainwashing. I, I, um, I switch on uh, motivation because I've had to do it all my life or starve. So, um, yeah, I just get the paint on the canvas and then see what happens. Um, so yeah, you just have to go for it. Uh, someone, uh, okay, inverted pipes. Uh, you say, I got into stained glass and only now I'm finding time to return to painting. Okay, interest. I've always been interested in stained glass. Never quite understood how they do it, but I know some of the technicalities of how they join it together, but uh, the actual, so I know that some stained glass is just made out of lots of various colours. Some seem to have paintings on them. Interesting. Someone in Brighton. Oh, I used to live in Brighton. A passing badger. Great name. Uh, yeah, I used to live in Brighton back in the 70s. Great place. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's just one of those places that uh, I always have to visit when I go to England. Uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. That sounds good. Linda Simmons. Anything with a beach. It's got beach in the name. I want to be there. Um, Queensland. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, hopefully. Annabelle Davy. I would like... Oh, my picture's flickering. I hope I haven't frozen. Um, yeah, I've always wanted to go to Australia. Uh, Okay. Oh, good. Someone's saying they like the length of my videos. Uh, that's, it looks like, oh, how do you say your name? It looks like L-L-R-J-J-C. 
So I'll call you LL for short. Um, now you say you like the length of my videos. Do you like the long ones or the short ones? Do you mean, do you mean oh, I see you signed it at the end, Joe. Joe from Mission. Uh, do you like the hour long ones or the latest one I put up, which was about 36 minutes? Some people say they like the long ones, some people I don't know. Who knows? Changes from day to day. Um, J.R. Lakin, you only get to paint twice a week. It's a real shame. Too many commitments. I understand totally. Um, oops, oh dear, that's jumped right up. Um, Inverted Pope, Sussex. Oh, in West Sussex. Uh, small, it is a small world indeed. Yeah, I lived in um, I lived in a village called Hartfield in East Sussex, and I also lived near East Grinstead, and I've lived in Tunbridge Wells. Um, I move around quite a lot, or have done. Yeah. Um, Newfoundland, Canada, D Leg. Um, yeah, I must get to Canada one day. I really, well, I hope I make it, but uh, who knows. Um, Linda Simmons, have you used spike lavender oil for painting or, or brush cleaning? No, I haven't actually. Um, I've never used oil for brush cleaning. Some people say you should do it. Um, I don't. It's just uh, not something I would do because I'm, I'm, when I finish painting, I clean the brush and I want all the oil and all the paint out. So I, um, I tend to go for it with the detergent. Um, J, J.R. Lakin, inspiration will come, but it has to find you working. That's a very good quote. Absolutely agree with that. Uh, East Sussex, the Parson Badger. Yeah, I've done that. Um, excuse me while I try to get the messages so I can read them. Uh, Ian Wilson, you prefer the longer videos. That's good to hear. And so does Kathy Serafinowitz. I may have pronounced that sort of right. I don't know. But um, yeah, the, lo the long ones, um, it's interesting because I quite often start a painting and I think uh, I'll do some quick ones. Because when you do, when you put up a YouTube uh, to a channel, you get to look at s statistics. And I look at the people's attention span. It tells you everything. It doesn't give me your address, but it tells me lots of stuff. And the general attention span seems to be between 10 and 15 minutes. If you can get people to stay longer, that's good because it affects all kinds of stuff. The algorithm suddenly goes, oh, people are looking at this person's videos. Let's promote them more. So um, I thought, well, if I make a shorter video, maybe people will just watch the whole thing but it doesn't quite work that way. Um, it's almost like the attention span for, an, if that's an hour, the attention span is about this much. You make a, a video this long, the attention span is this much. So it's like, almost like they, they're married together. I, I just don't know what to do sometimes. Um, but an hour, I suppose, is a, a good time to paint a picture. Uh, it's sort of comfortable for me. Uh, to get one done in half an hour, I have to really go for it. Um, Anything less than that, I mean, you know, I could do something in 10 minutes, but it would just be one color, um, just a sort of sludgy greeny brown color, which if you ever go and look in the woods, particularly in Europe anyway, it's pretty, well, possibly some bits of America, it seems to be the predominant color. So um, forget bright greens and bright blue skies. It's all, everything is, I uh, don't know how to explain it really. I'll just have to show you in the next video. It's all sort of brown and scruffy. Um, okay, Georgina Dixon, you're an acrylic person, are you? Well, you, you can be helped. Um, just try oil, see what happens. Or maybe you don't. Some, I have to make a point here. Some people don't use oil because um, it can affect your skin sometimes. Some people are sensitive to it. I, luckily, I'm not. And... Um, uh, it could be that. That's quite often the reason why people use acrylics. Um, but let me know. Let me know. Why do you use acrylics? Uh, so, um, okay. 
30 minute, 30 minute videos are great for downtime at work and in the something I think evening. Spell check's terrible, isn't it? Takes over sometimes. Longer videos are best. Okay, well at least there's a there's an, a, a good mix of lengths of videos there for you to look at. And um, thank you for that. That's a very nice comment. Um, Regina Pierce, I just woke up five in the morning here in Canada, so I'll have to watch from the beginning. I wonder what I will learn from you today. Well, I, only what's going on in the chat thing today. Um, I won't be, I'm not actually painting today. but uh, um, And I may paint, I may paint tomorrow, depending on whether I can get this camera to look at the painting. It's, uh, the room is small and crowded with quite a lot of junk. Uh, well, not junk, it's uh, stuff that I'm storing. <laughs> that I just can't bring myself to throw away. I've got a lot of paint tubes lying around and um, the cable to this camera, it's difficult to get it to point at the easel. So I'll figure, maybe I'll figure something out. Uh, okay, where are we? Um, okay. I think I might have missed a few here. The screen suddenly went. Uh, someone, Ian Wilson, prefers the longer ones. Um, Christopher Blaylock. If you don't worry about the length, that's good. Just keep watching all of them. That's the best thing. Uh, you're, you're welcome, Dorina. Dorina. Uh, oh, right. When you design book covers, I, I don't design the covers. Uh, that's way too much trouble. What I do is I, I design the text and format the text, and I do diagrams and drawings to go in books. The covers, we have a separate guy who does that in England, um, and um, he's welcome to it. I've, I've, I've done, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 covers, but not for quite a few years because I don't want to. It's, uh, it's much easier just to put the text, format it, make it look good, make it look like a book, because the covers can drive you insane, because you can design a cover, then the author gets to look at it and they say, oh, I don't quite like that colour there. Now, earlier today, I saw a pigeon and it had a nice sort of grey bluey colour here. If I get a picture of that pigeon and send it to you, can you match that colour? All kind, you wouldn't believe the things you have to go through to design a book cover. Um, so I don't do the covers. I designed the cover to my own book, which is a crime novel. Um, and that came out really scary. So I won't go there. Anyway, if, if you look in my links under the videos, you'll see links to my book. And um, bear in mind, it's a crime novel, so it's a bit gory and it's, yeah. Um, okay, now what else we've got? Uh, okay. Okay, Jackie Miller, I'm glad that my videos are um, energizing your painting. It's good to hear. Um, good afternoon from Peterborough. What's that? Peterborough in West Sussex. Would it be West? Yeah, it would be possibly West Sussex. I don't know. Been through there a few times. Um, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, as long as possible. Oh, no, I've gone that, I've done, I've read that one. Um, had, oh, here's a good question. Um, I, get a lot, oh, I get a lot of people from Canada. It's interesting, that. Good. Uh, David Dick, thank, uh, good morning to you. Um, how do I determine the price of a painting? Oh, there's lots of silly answers to that. I think of a number and quadruple it. Um, it's a very interesting question. Some people go by, uh, they have a number of dollars or pounds or whatever per square inch. I don't do that. I do. I go by the same method that um, I would think most artists use, and that is experience, uh, demand, uh, how many people, how many, how many people actually want my paintings? Um, and how do I put it? What I, 
It's a very interesting. Do you know, I haven't been asked that question for a long time. I, I go by looking at it. I look at other artists on the internet. I look at their prices. I compare my paintings to their paintings. The overall size, even though I'm not calculating the square inches, um, and I, I, I see what is the current preferred amount people spend. However, sometimes people ask me, they'll say, how much is a painting of whatever, so, so you know, something I've done. Um, and I, I, I give them a price and they say, well, that's not, believe me, this does happen. Uh, a gentleman in America wanted to buy two paintings and he, I gave him the price and he said, no, it's not enough. I thought, oh, this could be a scam building up here because I, people try you know you send me a painting i'll send you a check no 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 no, 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 no. we don't go there um so i i asked him i said what would you expect to spend and he told me so i said fine I have two paintings and that's the amount and it's you know it's not a low amount so i i go by a minimum price now um if you send me a facebook message whatever i'll give you a price on a painting um, but the absolute minimum price, I suppose I can tell you on here, um, although it may go up and nothing goes down, if there's this, this in mind, is it, around about a thousand pounds because I know I can get that. Um, but I know artists uh, who are selling paintings the same size as mine for six thousand, seven thousand, whatever. Um, and they, that's the sort of money they get. So the other thing I'm asked, which relates to that, is so if you can paint a picture in an hour and get a thousand, I, I, oh, I must point out, I wouldn't finish a painting in an hour and sell it for a thousand. It's always got extra work done on it because a lot of the paintings I do that you see on YouTube are um, demo paintings. It's one I can show you in an hour. And then sometimes I'll come back to a painting um and show you how to finish it off so it's never it's never exactly an hour but supposing someone did say and this has happened someone did say uh well oh, i like that painting exactly as it is and they they want to pay the money and um the way you explain to some to some people not everybody some people want it to be explained they say well how can you justify a thousand pounds for an hour's work well 50 years of experience has enabled me to do that in an hour um, plus thousands to create that picture. I hope that makes sense. But, um, the personal painting and their family, but um, you get a wider appeal, I think, with landscapes. Um, so, yeah, it's, I'm not likely to be doing, doing any more portraits.